Welcome to this training video. We're going to discuss the infusion controller and certain settings that need to be set on the controller so that your Vantage system will function correctly. These settings are going to be necessary for you to get all of the features out of the Vantage system. These functions are port forwarding needed for remote access via smartphones, tablets, and even you as the dealer remotely accessing the system for a service call. For more information on how to set up port forwarding, visit portforward.com. DNS server settings needed for weather widgets on the new Equinox family of devices and email procedures. Let's go ahead and jump to setting up this infusion controller. Any of these soft buttons will wake it up and take it to a menu button. Notice I have net, info, time, and C to C. We're going to focus today on net. By pressing the button once, it shows me the type of networking that is set up. The none setting is for use with larger systems, with the multiple controllers, where the first controller is on the network and has its address, and then set all the additional controllers to none. By pressing the button underneath the adjust, this allows me to change the type. I now have a setting for DHCP, which will get the address automatically from the router. I also have a default, which is factory set, network setting. And then I also have the static IP address. We recommend using a static IP address instead of the auto-assigned dynamic DHCP address that the router normally kicks out. This is needed to be able to communicate remotely with the port forwarding address that needs to be set up and also just for touch screens and other devices in the house that are on the network to be able to communicate with the controller correctly. If you're not comfortable or familiar with setting up networks and making adjustments to the router, we recommend you get some additional training or seek out an IT professional to help you with these type of settings. This is a necessary part of the Vantage Control System. This is not the purpose of this specific training video to teach you how to set up a network. So now that we're on static, we're going ahead and use these other buttons that just popped up. I've got a previous and a next. What this is going to do is move the cursor for me. Notice that it goes across the number systems next or previous, meaning forward or backwards. Okay. Now, if I need to adjust this, I've got the address of 192.168.1.110. Now, I've got a static address that I've set up and I want it to be 115. So I'm going to move the cursor over the last digit and start pressing the adjust button until it gets to 5. So now I've got an IP address of 192.168.1.115. I'm going to press the next button and it comes onto the network mask or NM. Now notice it stopped on the NM. We'll come back to this in just a moment but this shows you that I can actually do something underneath the network mask. So the network mask, once again, I would be using the next button to come across, make adjustments to this address here on the network mask. 255.255.255.0 is a normal network mask. So I'm going to hit previous, come back to where it's on network mask, and I'm going to hit adjust. And notice that now it says GW for gateway. Now this is an important setting that needs to be set and match the address that's on the router. My router is 192.168.1.1 network address. And so I've gone ahead and set that up, but if I needed to, just like I showed you before, navigate over to the number you need to change and hit adjust, and that'll allow you to change that and set it to whatever you need to have. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the previous button now, take it to where it's highlighting gateway, and hit adjust. And this is my D1 or DNS1. 
Now let's go ahead and jump to the laptop and show you where you can find these settings on your local computer. So I'm using a Windows 7 machine. XP and Vista are fairly similar for the network settings. We're going to go onto your uh, start menu, go to the control panel and find your network and sharing center. I'm going to go ahead and open that up, go into your changing your adapter settings. I'm going to click on local area connection. If you're connected wirelessly, then you would do this on that. Right click on it and go under your status and then you'll find your details button and here you can see all of your IP information about your network. We're going to focus on the DNS server addresses. We've got the two different addresses we need to input on the controller. 10.87.94.142 and this 10.87.14.150. Let's use those now. So now that we've recorded the DNS numbers, let's go ahead and verify. Looks like I've already got those in there. I've got a 10.87.94.142. So that is correct. If I needed to adjust, of course, then I could make those adjustments with the adjust button. So by using the previous, I'm going to come back to the D1, hit adjust, and there's my D2, which is the second number which I had, which is 10.87.114, or no, excuse me, .14.150. So it looks like I've got all of those settings in there correctly. If I come back to the D2, hit adjust, it'll take me around to the network mass, so I now know that I've got all of my settings done that need to be done and I will use the set button hit that and it tells me hey you've saved the configuration and we are good to go hit the exit button a couple times take me back out to the home page and we are done now that we've covered the network settings let's go ahead and briefly discuss the home page so across the top we have the date and time the next row C number is the controller's number. This one is set as one on the board in the back. CO is for the number of controllers in the Vantage system. So this can, depending on if I have three or four in a house, would represent that. The M is for modules, number of modules that is run by this controller. So in the secondary enclosures, you can see I have up to 15 modules in this system. The MC stands for the memory card, which I have in this system. The T is for termination, which is on the board in the back. Now next to the T, there will be an O that pops up when I put the system into override. The A next to that is a processor build revision. On the next row down, we have W for wire link stations, depending on how many keypads and scene point dimmers, etc. that I have on the system. The R is for radio link stations. Once again, keypads or scene point dimmers that are in radio link. The E is for enablers, allowing communication with all the radio stations, both radio link and RFLC, for a total of three enablers, one RFLC and up to two radio link. And then the last number is the firmware version that is on this controller. Now this bottom row is for workload, Remember all of this is real-time information from what the controller is actually seeing connected to it, not a display of the programmed DC file. So this info can be used as a diagnostic tool as well. For more information, you're welcome to go to the install guide, which is in the documentation library, for more details. Thank you for watching this training video on Infusion Controller Setup. Please continue to look for additional training videos on our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash vantage.